And we'd spend the entire day with all of us. And it wasn't just talking about episode one. It was just talking about episode two. It was all the entire season and everybody contributing Tom, Owen, Raphael, all those pitching ideas. And that's how we stayed on the same page, but it's how we elevated the, the how great the season was with all those geniuses down in the room. I love Loki season two. Episode two is amazing. And this show just keeps getting better and better. Um, there's so many Easter eggs in this first episode, but first, can you tell us what General Dox's pruning of the timeline branches means to other parts of the multiverse we've already seen, like Earth 838, old Captain America's branch, and uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man universes? Uh, we played around with some of those ideas. We didn't get too specific about who was going to go. It was definitely, but yeah, I made, I went online and made my list of what the timelines were, but um you know, it's something that was kind of, it was fun. I got to work on season one on, uh, on the visual effects. So it was part of the birth of the multiverse. And then on season two, I got to be part of the blowing up of the multiverse, which is kind of, you know, nice, you know, alpha and omega in terms of what, what's happening storyline. wise. Definitely a full circle moment. Now with the pruning of all the timelines, in your opinion, what does this mean for the TVA and the multiverse? Well, I think that's what we're going to have to see over the next few episodes. It's, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of great things coming up. I can't us. wait. Now, is there an agreed like rule book for the sacred timeline that's passed around amongst uh, creators on Loki or even in the MCU? What was amazing about season one and a lot of it, you know, the, the accolades go to Kate Heron on the first season coming up with the world building and did so much that, you know, we, we added to it, but it was we relied on that quite a bit in terms of what was you know the ideas of the of the sacred timeline and and you know using it for like episode two is kind of the you know the safe zone and how Brad knew he would be safe you know if he was on a branch we got to get off the branch so you know the world was built for us we've kind of we added the time slipping in the TVA and and some other things to come up but it's it's you know it's 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 lovely to have a world built on the comics but then within the series itself has had its own kind of ideas and structure to play with expanding on that a little bit can you talk about collaborating with producers the other directors and writers uh to keep the show consistent so what we did and it was great it was something that kevin wright it, it worked with on season one and it's something that tom hiddleston now is as our executive producer something that he kind of you know accommodated slash wanted slash very much of his theory experience in terms of you know the cast and company coming together so what we did is we as the scripts were getting closer to being finished, we went to we went down to the writers' room, and it would be the writers, Kevin, Tom, and all the directors, no matter what episode it was, and then the cast. And we would bring the cast in, you know, based on when they arrived in London and what episodes they were in. And we'd spend the entire day with all of us. And it wasn't just talking about episode one; it was just talking about episode two. It was all the entire season, and everybody contributing, Tom, Owen, Raphael, all those pitching ideas. And that's how we stayed on the same page, but it's how we elevated the, the how great the season was with all those geniuses down in the room. I mean, it seems like a real MCU think tank at that point, just throwing out all these brilliant ideas together. Um, it, was, it was great. I mean, Key came when Key came in, he like he sat down next to me and he leaned over. He's like, "Is this normal?" And I'm like, "Well, it's normal for these guys." <laughs> uh, yeah, Key, Key's great. He's literally my new favorite MCU character. Obi's fantastic. Um, can you tell us anything about the decision to include uh, a nod to Zanuck, uh, Phone Ranger, and the Eternals Kingo uh, in, in some of the Easter eggs we see in episode two? Yeah, it was something that happened on, we were, we were scouting. You know, we, it was the Noel Coward Theater, and there's the marquees outside along the alleyway. And Kevin Wright came up to me one day, he's like, how'd you feel about if we put like Kingo's poster in there? And I had done second unit work on the turtles. I'm like, oh, that'd be great. You know? And, and so we put that in and then, you know, the Easter eggs kind of what came, had even more Easter with phone ranger. That's what you can see um, based on where they're the, walking on the path. But there was like, there was a Herbie, the Herbie love bug poster, you know, a lot of that era Disney, you know, movies kind of in the multiple runs that they would do in theaters back then. There was a lot of those posters as well. I love that. Now it's even more like that I have to stop on for each little Easter egg in, in Loki season two. Now uh, I'm fascinated by the graffiti choices with one saying uh, less than enough and uh, all M are brothers. 
the latter has prompted uh, people to theorize that that's about mutants. Who's responsible <laughs> for the London graffiti? Uh, that's the art department. Uh, Kazra, our production designer, um, genius, you know, with all the sets and, and the overall design of the film. And, and you can see with like the posters in uh, the TVA, if you let the art department run with something, they will just come up with amazing ideas that, you know, just, you know, have a story behind them. But, you know, something you never would have anticipated showing up on set. Do you want to chime in on that uh, one uh, all, all M or brothers thing being uh, connected to mutants? I it wasn't really planned. It was funny. I, I had my humanities teacher in university was you were talking about a book and. She got had an idea that the the author didn't really agree with, so she was kind of so she told her class, "It's like, well, if, if it's there, it's there." And it's like, okay, I don't think that was the intention, but you know, if they if they want it to be there, sure. Why not? I love it. I absolutely love it. Now you've worked on uh, visual f- effects for a ton of Marvel projects. Um, how did that prepare you for Loki season two uh, to take the spot uh, in the director's chair? I think it was my experience with a lot of times with the Russos and 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 you know learning from them and doing some of the you know, design the sequences, design the battles and kind of learning about story and keeping, you know, a story being told. So it's not just, it's not just a fight with a bunch of people bashing each other with their superpowers. So it was taking a lot of that creativity and then bringing it forward and the things that looked learned with working with the different artists into directing. And so you're, you're, you're in just everything that, Tom and Kevin help set up with the collaboration. It's making sure you have that with the rest of the departments. And you know, you have to have a vision, you have to have an idea, and you have to have a plan. But you show up on set, and you want to let that plan be loose enough that when the actors get going, you know they can make magic, and you don't want to pull them back. But you 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 know what the plan is, so you're not going to let the scene get away and not tell the story you need to tell. But we were incredibly lucky with all of our actors. We start this episode in uh, London in the late 70s. This was definitely like a glam era. Uh, Can you talk about recapturing that Silver Age kind of like, I want to say Hollywood vibe, but I know it's in London uh, that we see in Loki season two, because I thought that stuff looked great. It almost was like a that Quentin Tarantino movie was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood vibes a little bit. We definitely went through uh, a lot of the old footage and stills of premieres in London. And so the Zaniac poster or the marquee on top of the theater, directly inspired by the James Bond premieres. In this one case, I think it was Moonraker, just in terms of the the size in which they, they put on the front of the theater. And then playing with the idea of, you know, the, the vintage cars and, and, you know, getting into, you know, away from the theater, getting into the, you know, Loki's confrontation with Brad and the mods and the punks were there. So you, you spend a lot of time just having fun, finding pieces of things you could put in, in London. And, you know, I got stuck a little bit because I wanted the punks and I wanted the mods, but the, uh, the mods, you know, at that phase of music had kind of passed, but, you know, getting into 1977, there's a band called the jam, and then 78, 79, Quadrophini would come out. So you're kind of looking at the crazy part of doing tra- time travel movies or kind of picking the cool things you want and just trying right. to shove them in and figure out how to make the years work so you can get 1977 because that's when Star Wars came out. So you just got to work it all together and as best you can. I know that you guys had like that think tank to work on Loki season two where you guys were all together. Um, do you have a favorite variation of Kang and have we seen him yet in Loki season two? I love all the Kangs. I think Kang's a great character. I don't know that we've seen the definitive Kang yet. You know, in terms of what I would envision the definitive Kang, I think there's still still someone yet to come out of the shadows. This series is hitting on all levels, Dan. Amazing job on this episode. It's my favorite MCU series. I love Loki season two. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. 